haven't been able to properly grieve or heal. Good morning. So if you couldn't tell by now, I have some sort of little head cold going on. Um, we all went traveling over the weekend up to Washington State, and then we drove back down uh, along I-5. That that wasn't fun. Um, traveling for a day and a half by car with a, an infant while everyone's sick. Don't recommend. Don't do it. But yeah, that's kind of why I did not finish vlogging the trip as I had planned to um, because we all just felt really crappy and why would I want to pull, pull out the camera when we feel like super super crappy you know. Um, Kieran actually didn't get too bad I think I, I'm not sure what it is that we have but it's really not that bad and um, it doesn't seem to affect Kieran nearly as bad as the adults so. My siblings and I have been kind of dreading this trip. Don't really want to dwell too much on why, but if you know, you know. So we went up to Washington to fulfill my mother's last wishes, pick up a bunch of mementos from her, some various items that, that meant a lot to us. Um, my brother and sister-in-law have all of the pictures from growing up. They have all of them. They plan to scan them and send them to everybody. Sorry, the dishwasher's kind of loud, but I found my mother's handwritten recipe boxes. This was my grandmother's. It's it easily like 60 years old. This is my mother's. All a bunch of like recipes. This is Swedish potato sausage. And again, this box is easily like 40 years old. I really want to scan all of these handwritten recipes and create a book. I'm also, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a big task. I also wanna make some of the recipes so I can get some nice pictures of them and then create a recipe book of you know, recipes from our mom and our grandmother and uh, give a copy to, to all the family members. I was thinking this would be such a beautiful cover to that book. There's two other boxes. They're just, uh, I think they're, yeah, in that suitcase over there. Some other things that were very important to me were my mom's beautiful, I, I think they're princess house dishes. They have like this beautiful poinsettia design on them. We ate her wonderful food off of them for every Christmas and it was just one of those things that meant a lot to me. And then of course there's these beautiful calla lily dishes from the 80s that belonged to my grandmother. And these were left to me by my grandmother. Um, you know, she's, she's been gone since 2001 and uh, I finally have them. So very, very happy those didn't get thrown away. Because unfortunately a lot of things did get thrown away. I really wanted to take a lot of my mother's clothing and create like little cat dolls for everyone in the family, for the grandkids, for my, my siblings. There was this particular green shirt that she had in her closet that had fallen leaves on it. It was her favorite shirt. And unfortunately that got thrown away along with everything else in her closet. There was just one holiday sweater that I had taken home with me before she passed away. I'm so grateful that I have that. But there was one stack of nightgowns that did not get thrown out. I'm so grateful for that. So this is what I'm going to be using to make those dolls with. Another thing that I'm grateful that um, a woman from the church rescued were these two dresses that my mom was making that she never got to finish. It does need a little bit of laundering, but I'm just so happy I have something that she made. Some other treasures are some sergers, some sewing machines, an embroidery machine, a cricket, a uh, cricket mug press. You know, when I was there taking care of her in her final days, she really wanted to make a little mug for Kieran that said Kieran's cocoa and we just never got around to it. So um, I really wanted to have that so I could make that in, in her memory. <laughs> There's a printout picture of me and my mom when I was 14. What else? Oh yeah. We were told that these were thrown out, but um, this is my baby's first Christmas ornament, 1987. 
a bunch of um, handmade icicle ornaments that my mother made. You know, she was very, she was just such a crafty person to be able to make these things. This is hand painted by my grandmother probably in the 60s. It has her initials there. Soap molds with some soap making supplies. That was one of the things that we loved doing together as well. I made this when I was a kid. <laughs> Just a lot of, you know, beautiful memories that, that we really didn't want going in the trash. So we grabbed them. We also brought home some of our daughter's things and my sister-in-law had this printed for me. And then one of our favorite things, our mom had a bunch of these like jeweled cat ears and different metal finishes like black, silver, gold. And she wore them every day to keep her hair out of her face. I mean, there's just so many things. Like this is my grandfather's clock that was at the beach house. If any of y'all watched my video titled For You Mom, um, I showed like the beach house where my grandparents lived in Whidbey Island. I just remember loving looking at this clock. I don't know why, but I always wanted to have it. It's broken, like it doesn't work. It needs a lot of things to be replaced and I'll probably end up doing that. But um, yeah, I just really wanted to grab that. And I don't know if anybody had these trunks in the 90s, but this is full of all of my childhood toys. All of my drawings, a bunch of journals. Got journals from, I started keeping journals when I was nine. So there's there's still my journals from all those decades ago. Again, you know, something that I was told was thrown away, but I, I was very grateful that it actually wasn't. And then I'm just keeping a few things over here on Kieran's um, home school table. My mother collected a lot of Jim Shore and when her cat, Miss Kitty, passed away, I bought her this little figurine that's supposed to represent my daughter holding her cat in heaven. She also was obsessed with succulents and this is one of the succulents that she planted a few years ago. There's some various um, knickknacks, and of course her beautiful urn that she guided me to. I also grabbed one of her favorite coffee cups that she used to drink out of every single day. It still had like the stains from her coffee in it. I just filled it up with coffee beans. I would really like to get a corner curio cabinet to put here and then I'll move Kieran's homeschool table like over by his um, play center. And um, this is where I would like to display you know, stuff from my mom and stuff from my daughter because I've not been able to display anything from my daughter because I don't have any kind of display cabinet. So we're in the process of looking for one that's not too expensive and uh, yeah, something that'll fit in this corner. Kieran's sleeping, so I have to do voiceover for this part, but this is the candle that my mom got for my daughter, Kaya, and it turns on at 6.37 p.m. every night for four hours. That's the time that she was born. But yeah, it is such a relief to finally have all of our mother's last wishes fulfilled. I mean, truth be told, it has been a rough six weeks. We haven't been able to properly grieve or heal. And I think at this moment, there's nothing left that can be used to make that healing process not move forward. Finally free.